Hi friends, it's Elise here from Bully Bell, and I'm so excited because it's time for another planner setup and giveaway using the new Coco Daisy August kit. As usual, I'm not gonna do a whole unboxing here, but I will quickly run through what we got. First, we got six different papers that are all double-sided, so you can choose which one you like best. We got a functional sheet and tab labels, also a date sheet and a notepad and post-its. Just like in May, we got another beautiful ribbon clip from Peony's Papery. The paperclip puffy stickers are also back this month, and we got a charm that I turned into a tassel. We also got some washi, and then we also got this beautiful gold foiled vellum. To top it all off, we got our usual die cuts, we also got our tabs, and of course our inserts, which we will be looking at more closely later. This month I'm going to be using another Recollections Planner and let me tell you, I really hope that this is the last month that I have to use one of these. I did not have my act together. I really wanted to order this Marigold A5 Carpe Diem Planner, but I just didn't get my act together in time. And so at the last minute, this is all that I could make work. Of course, I'll also be using the day kit from my shop, which is a three page kit here. There's also lots of different add-ons you can choose from like the ones that I'm showing here. And of course, I'll be doing another giveaway this month. And all you have to do to enter is to subscribe and then in the comments, just post a comment that says stickers please and you will be entered to win the date kit and the tassel that I just showed there. But not to worry, if you did already order the date kit for August, you can always just get it for September instead if you win. And I am so excited about the September kit. I am just so excited about it. So I have some special things planned, lots of different add-ons that I have not added in the past. So I definitely encourage you to stay tuned for that. In the meantime here, I just went ahead and picked out my five dividers and paired up some tabs to go with them. I don't really like to be too matchy matchy, so I went ahead and found some pairs that I liked and then adhered them with some craft tape. With my tabs all in place, it's time to go ahead and put on the tab labels. The first tab is home to my month on two pages insert, so I usually do the month at a glance tab. The second tab is where I like to put the week on two pages. So I usually do the hello, whatever the month is tab, which I'm so happy to say they included this month. My week on one page inserts live behind the third tab and I like to use those for journaling. So I go ahead and make my own tab label that says random thoughts. And I always include those with all the date kit orders from my shop. The fourth tab is home to my daily to do section. So of course I use that sticker there. And then finally, the fifth tab is my notes section, which they also have a little label for. And I just transfer that section over from my previous month's planner each month. Now I'm just gonna quickly show you how I use the date kit from my shop to set up my week on two pages spread. People use these stickers in different ways, but this is how I use them. I'm trying really hard not to tilt the page, so that's why it's going on a little bit more awkward than it probably needs to be. So thank you for bearing with me a little bit here. I use this planner as my work planner. So this is usually what I use for my coaching log and school is gonna be starting back up for me next week. So I am definitely gonna be getting a lot more use out of this monthly kit than I did in July when I had no work or school to worry about. For my week on one page inserts, I find that the little date stickers that come with the Coco Daisy kit are the perfect size to fit in these small little areas. Sometimes I use a piece of washi to try and line up the stickers, but often I will just place the stickers next to the holes, the stickers that are located next to holes first, and then just try and line up the other stickers by filling in the gaps. My daily to-do pages are very utilitarian and I really don't worry about making them look nice. I do use my little date kit part there up at the top to write the date each day and then sometimes if I have the time or inclination I will decorate the hydrate section since I really don't use it myself. On the first day of the month here I'm just using a piece of watercolor washi along with a Mambi quote sticker and then I'm just trying to incorporate some of the watercolor washi from the date kit as well as some of the little sunflower deco stickers that come with the date kit just to create a little fun scene down here and experiment with layering a little bit. I started including custom washi strips with the date kits each month and it's really fun to see how people, how my different customers have used them in different creative ways. 
The next step for me is always to take a piece of paper or two from the kit that has the most color variety and then use that to try and weed through my collection of scrapbook paper and journaling cards to see which ones might work. I am running seriously low on journaling cards, so I, I really struggled a little bit with this setup. I only had really a few that would work, and I usually try and buy them like on clearance. I really rarely want to pay like full price for a Project Life kit, so I am definitely in need of some more. On this first divider, I decided to use one of the last dashboards from a little pack from the Target dollar spot that I had left because I liked how it pulled and played off of the watercolors behind that herringbone pattern. And now I'm just going through a pad of watercolor scrapbook paper that I got at Walmart because I wanted to try and create a kind of collage of watercolor paper as my matting behind the journaling card dashboard thingy. I promise you that my intentions were good here, but the actual way it came out was just all wrong. Like I really do kind of hate the way that this divider turned out. So it's a little bit unfortunate that it's my first divider. I did end up going back later to try and fix it, but really who knows if I really made it any better. I really don't know. One thing that is kind of interesting to note is that this kit is sunflower themed, but I definitely made it more about rainbows. I don't know if maybe that whole sub theme started here. I guess definitely the pages, the papers were the inspiration, but it definitely went in a more rainbow direction than sunflowers. So after much hemming and hawing, I decided that the best thing to do would be to cut down the watercolor mat as much as possible and then layer it on top of this really bright, brilliant orange. And then to kind of echo the handmade nature of the watercolor background, I decided to use a couple strips of watercolor washi to just kind of give it that handmade feel. So I put the warmer tone washi on top and the cooler tone one on the bottom to do a kind of echoing reversal of the pattern in the background. And I probably should have just stopped right here. I wish you guys had been there to tell me to stop, but instead I put down a couple watercolor swatch stickers from my shop, partly because I thought it played off of the idea of making your mark and partly because I just couldn't help myself. So thank you for living through that with me and you'll be glad to know that things went much more smoothly on the next divider. I absolutely love this cloud paper, so I wanted to keep it really simple and dreamy so that it wouldn't compete with the soft background. I chose this really buttery yellow journaling card that says you make me happy when skies are gray, and as I was sorting through my papers, I remembered these darling little watercolor cloud die cuts, and I thought those would be perfect to keep that soft dreamy feel. I definitely could have just left it the way it was like that, but I decided that I would try and include some transparent washi strips just to kind of mimic the, you know, transparent fluffy nature of clouds. So I grabbed this polka dot blue and white transparent washi that was from a Michael's box. Then I grabbed this newsprint washi that's semi-transparent that is from the paper studio, which is my favorite kind of washi. And then lastly, I used a slightly gold foil washi from the Target dollar spot because I love the soft delicate touch that it added. I did play around a little bit with adding some other little washi strips around but decided that less was definitely more in this situation. Once I had everything in place I went ahead and adhered the journaling card down and then added the beautiful watercolor clouds before moving on to the next divider. I specifically chose this side of that divider tab because I knew I wanted to emphasize the lime green at the top of this polka dot print. In order to do that, I went straight to my wood grain paper pad from the Joanne $1.99 section and pulled out a beautiful lime green print and then went about finding another color from the print like this orange that I could use as matting as well. Initially, I was thinking that I would use this portion of a journaling card with that green quote, but then I remembered that one of my Mambi sticker books had some transparent quotes, so I thought that might be a better option since I was running low on journaling cards. In order to let the quote pop a little bit more, I decided to bring the green print to the front and then use the orange more as the matting. 
I wanted to bring out some of the other colors in the print of the background like that beautiful yellow and what better way to do that than with some washi. So I rounded the edges of my orange matting and then decided to create a little washi banner in the background. First I used this wide washi from a Michaels tube of watercolor washi that I highly recommend for anybody if you ever see it. And then I layered on top of it a bright yellow washi from the paper studio. Once I had those down there, I decided that I still wanted to bring in a little bit of the green tone. So I initially started with the washi from the April kit, from the Coco Daisy April kit, but I decided that really wasn't enough green. So I moved on to this beautiful green and kind of bluish colored washi from the paper studio to kind of round out the whole color scheme in this divider. There is nothing like the combination of wood grain and florals to me, so I figured this would be a great place to use some of the die cuts. I knew that I wasn't going to use that vase die cut, so I decided to turn it sideways so that it was kind of poking out on the edge and then add that beautiful kind of dahlia or zinnia die cut on top. The divider tab was definitely my inspiration for this next dashboard as well. I was immediately drawn to this quote because it had that kind of aubergine color in the text. And I knew that I wanted to try and bring out some of the lime and chartreuse and fuchsia and orange colors in the tab as well in doing my matting. So I went into my scrapbook paper stash and I found this nice kind of magenta and fuchsia print. And then I found this beautiful goldenrod grid kind of um, journaling card. So I initially started playing around with those. I also have this pad of denim pattern paper that I got at the Dollar Tree, which is kind of a cool find. So I was gonna try and incorporate that, but the dark blue just wasn't working for me. I felt like there was enough of that going on in the background, so I needed to work on bringing in some other colors. Then when I saw this aubergine glossy paper, I was absolutely smitten and figured that would be a great color to use. But I felt like things were still looking a little bit plain and I'd used up all of the die cuts that were really in this color palette. So I decided to branch out and be really brave and try my hand at doing some stamping and fussy cutting. I rounded up some scraps that were in the colors that I wanted to bring out on this divider and then just used some random floral stamps that I have and just started stamping around. I am definitely no expert at stamping. This is way, way, way outside of my comfort zone, but why not give it a shot? It was actually kind of fun and the end product wasn't too bad, so it gave me a little bit more confidence to maybe try some more stamping in the future. So once I had lots of different colors of flowers and leaves all cut out, I started just randomly placing them around my matted journaling card. And I tried to kind of play a little bit with the different layers. And in order to try and remember where I had placed them all so that I could glue them down, I just tried to kind of make a different pile for each layer. So a pile for the layer under the matting, a pile for the layer over the matting, and a pile for the layer above the journaling card itself. When I looked at the end product, I realized that I still kind of needed something more there in the bottom right corner. So I went ahead and stamped another little, I guess it's like a little trio of flowers. But then I kind of felt like there was no way to really cut them out all together and make it work. So I ended up just kind of cutting it down to just one little flower along with the leaves. But when I look at it now, I really wish that I had added another flower to the bottom left hand corner as well. I don't know if I meant to do it and forgot or what, but like looking at it now, it's so obvious that something needs to be there. I think I'll go do that. Now for the final divider, we have this beautiful horizontal stripe that is very reminiscent of like different washi tapes. And for this divider, I saw that follow your arrow foiled journaling card and I knew that's what I wanted to use. For a while now, I've kind of been thinking about how it would be cool to do something kind of woven on a divider, but um, I've never really found an occasion to make it happen. 
Something about this uh, this pattern on this paper kind of gave me the idea that maybe I should kind of play around with the idea of like woven strips of paper. But I felt like if I used like little mini strips of paper, it might just be too busy. So I remembered that at Ikea, I saw this woven heart. Like I think it was some kind of Scandinavian Christmas decor. And I remember looking at it and trying to figure out how it worked and I kind of realized that it was made out of two different pieces and in my mind kind of broke apart how it works. So here I'm trying to just recreate that. Unfortunately, it really didn't end up working out. Like the scale of it was just a little bit too large in order to see the woven detail behind the journaling card, but it was kind of fun to bring this kind of idea or model that I had in my mind to life. And maybe there would be a way for me to make it work in some different divider or layout. I don't know, maybe we'll see, but I definitely want to do some kind of woven detail at some point. So please stay tuned for that. We'll see how I can bring it to life. I don't know about you, but sometimes when you've invested like a little bit of time into something, it's a little bit difficult to just let go and move on. But I realized that I should just cut my losses and move on to a different design. So for my next idea, I wanted to play off of the horizontal lines by having a design that had more vertical lines. So I cut some different strips of paper and figured that I would have those going vertically behind the journaling card and its matting. I was playing with the idea of maybe like playing off of the follow your arrow theme by maybe cutting the vertical strips into arrow shapes. But I felt like in order to be able to pull that off, they really needed to be like perfect or else it would just look really sloppy and cluttered. So instead, I decided to just keep some 90 degree angles with that tangerine paper. And then I found this beautiful kind of cucumber or celadon color that I decided to layer on top in skinnier strips. And as you see here, I did kind of play around with maybe cutting them into little arrow shaped strips, but decided that it was better just to keep it simple and go ahead and glue those down in kind of uneven shapes. Then I went ahead and just glued those down and I just put the journaling card up top so that I would know kind of the spacing that I needed to use. And with those in place, I went ahead and glued down my little celadon strips as well. I don't know. It still needs something. It's hard to know at the time. You know, you never want to overdo it, but I don't know. I still feel like it's, it's lacking. In fact, most of the dividers this month are unfortunately lacking. I don't know. I guess I'm a little bit off my game or something. I did play around with adding some other arrow shapes just to play off of the follow your arrow idea, but just decided to keep it simple. Now back to this guy. Speaking of dividers with problems, I decided that I wanted to try and tackle this guy a little bit and maybe make him better. So I went back to stamping and I had this really cute stamp set that had different fasteners. So I stamped a couple on some colors from the divider and then I cut them out so that I could kind of simulate the journaling card being fastened to the page with them. And as I cut them out, I realized that it looked better, like that yellow one, if the background color of the stamped paper was the same as the divider in the area that it was placed. So because I liked the way that looked with the yellow and the orange binder clips, I tried to find a piece of blue paper that I could use up top for the clipboard um, clip, I guess we'll call it. That way it would kind of blend in a little bit better. But once I had it all up there, I realized that I really didn't like the way that it looked so much, but I did want to have something else up there. So in order to do that, I went in a totally different direction and found this little banner shape stamp and did that on a watercolor blue background and then cut right up against the line and figured I'd make a little banner kind of element in the top corner there. It seems that this is a common theme for this planner setup, but I probably should have just left it like that. But instead I decided to trick out this little embellishment a little bit more by adding some little banner flags off to the side of that stamped heart there. There is definitely something not quite right about it, but I'm just not going to worry about it. You know what? These are only dividers and it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to go with it. 
I thought about using the gold foiled vellum to kind of cover this all up, but I just decided that I would be steadfast and just go with my creation as it is. With my dashboard as finished as it was gonna get, I moved on to my second favorite part, which is decorating my planner pockets. I've decorated a few planner pockets in my day, and I have to say that these recollections planners are the hardest, like the most awkward ones to deal with. One of my lovely subscribers recommended that I cut the kind of credit card slots there up top so that it becomes one big slot. So that's what I'm doing there. And it really is a lot more easy to work with. So I appreciate that recommendation. And I went with that this time. But even after making that adjustment, they're just a little bit awkward, I guess, because they're so like long, you know, you have so much area to work with. It means that you have to do a lot of layering and it just is a little bit unwieldy. At this point, I still just wasn't liking the way that it was going. So I decided I needed to just kind of take everything out and start over fresh with a new situation. One of the problems I think was that bow that came in the kit, as much as I like it, like that light blue, I just found really distracting because like I said, this kit became a little bit more about rainbows than sunflowers for me. So when I took out that light colored bow and replaced it with that kind of goldenrod color, it things came together a lot more easily for me. But I do like the clip a lot, so I will definitely put it in my collection and it will appear at another time. Then I just started to kind of layer some different scraps of paper and use a little Mambi quote sticker to kind of flush out my pocket here. And it's just a nice way to bring in some other colors by pulling in different scrapbook papers and clips. You'll see that I use lots of different tool paper clips and I actually include one of those paper clips that coordinates with each order from my shop. And then orders of $20 or more get a tassel and then orders of $40 or more also get a felty clip. All of which I make myself with love. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this. If you've made it all the way to the end here, I really appreciate it. This setup was not exactly smooth sailing, but I did get it done. So thank you for spending this time with me. And I just wanted to remind anybody that's interested, if you would like to be entered in the giveaway to win the date kit and a tassel, all you need to do is subscribe and then comment down below stickers, please. Then I will just respond to your comment. I'll reply with a number and that's your entry number. And then we'll say maybe in four days or so, maybe on August 2nd, I will announce the winner and then I will get the goodies to that person. So again, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care and happy planning. Bye.